Wednesday night Bible study, Bethany Baptist Church. Thank you for tuning in here. <clears throat> Amber's just coming in here with our prayer sheets. Thank you. Anita has sent the prayer sheets out. So uh, if you got time to run to your computer and get a prayer sheet out, or you can get it later. Thank you, Amber. Can I grab one? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Wednesday night Bible study. Here's our prayer sheet. And just before we, as we get started into our study tonight, let's have prayer for Vincent. And Vincent and Ming have been a part of our church fellowship for so many years. And he's there in the Hollywood Hospital. And, um, uh, and so just, uh, uh, I saw him yesterday, and he was looking good yesterday, but a fever has, has uh, gone, has uh, uh, reoccurred with him, and he's having breathing problems that Ming has put on the WhatsApp. So let's uh, open our study in prayer and also pray for Vincent. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to come to you tonight again and to look into your word, and Father, to have fellowship together locally here and also through the web. And Lord, we just pray that God's word would have his way, or your word would have your way in our hearts and our lives. And Father, we just pray for Vincent, and we just pray for your hand upon him. And Lord, we pray that your way for him would be recovery. And so, Lord, we pray that this isn't a setback in his health, but just part of the routine of his body in, in this healing process that's going on in his body from this operation, this taking part of this pancreas. And so, Lord, we just uh, pray that your grace would be marvelous in his heart and life every, for a full recovery and also for Ming during this time, if she's not allowed to visit him there in the hospital, being that she's not vaxxed, uh, Lord, just uh, I pray for your hand upon her heart to encourage her, to uplift her. May your love be very well sensed in her heart and mind. And Lord, again now, we just ask that you bless us in this time of looking into the Word of God and the truth of, of salvation. And we ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Okay. We'll have more prayer time here, and we've got some newsletters tonight uh, from some of our missionaries. I've got to share. I can't wait till prayer time. But, you know, here in Australia, we constantly, you know, we're always driving at night. You're always looking for what on the road? Skippy. Skippy. You know, Skippy the kangaroo, maybe, jump out in front of you. And he does around here. We've had it more than once. We've even had Skippy running at us, haven't we, Amber? <laughs> Down the road, right toward us. <laughs> I wasn't in the car. Oh, you weren't in the car there. Oh, I thought you were in the back of the car. Okay, but neither and I have had Skippy right now. But uh, in one of our newsletters there from Pastor Daniel over in India, he and his wife had been helping some lady in another village, <clears throat> and they were coming back to their town. And as they were going down the road, all of a sudden he had to hit the brakes real hard because out stepped in, right, right in front of him stepped out a big elephant, and it was a bull elephant. Oh, oh. <laughs> He said in his newsletter here, he said he's only 30 feet from us. And recently in the news, how one elephant had attacked a you know, bus and you know, cars were stopped and he had turned them all over and everything. So he's, he was praying, he was praying, but fortunately, and praise the Lord, the elephant went across and decided he didn't want to turn a car over. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. So praise the Lord. In our Bible study, we're looking at Calvinism. And last week, if you have the little book there, you picked it up at church, or if you want me to send you one, uh, just email us, send us an email, or get a hold of my text. Do you need one there, Mike? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're open. Oh, there, there. Oh, yeah, there we are. Okay. And we're still looking at limited atonement, point number three. Limited atonement, point number three here. And... Uh, it's on page four in the little booklet here by Vince Wall from the Herald of Hope Ministry. And uh, we read it last week, Limited Atonement. I'll just read again the opening part here. But as I said last week, we're going to look more at it through um, the book entitled What Love Is by Dave Hunt. I've got some articles in there that I want to read out to us so we can get a good, better grasp of this. But as Vince Wall says in his booklet here, the doctrine of limited atonement teaches that Christ only died for the elect and that he did not die for all people. This Calvinistic doctrine strikes a blow at the heart of the gospel. 
Uh, Romans 1.16, for are not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God and salvation to what? Amen. To everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, but to everyone that believes. And so it's for everyone, and especially for those who are the believers. And we looked at several verses. John Vince last week had at the bottom had several verses to look at for us to see how the gospel is for everyone. And we'll look at some more this week. But what I want to do is come over here to uh, Dave Hunt's book on what love is this. And, and this, is in his, this is in his section on called Limited Atonement. Okay. I'm going to read you some articles from this. And we're going to be looking at scripture, so get your Bibles ready. And we'll, we're going to look at some scripture also. But here at the beginning of this chapter, it's chapter 16 in the book, on Limited Atonement. The ale in tulip, okay? And so, yeah, there's tulip at the bottom of the little track there, T-U-L-P, tulip, okay? And the L stands for limited atonement. And the L in tulip represents one more integral theory in Calvin's scheme of salvation. The doctrine which limits the atonement to the elect and only to the elect. This concept follows directly from the limitation Calvinists place upon God's love. You see, they're limiting God's love when they have this position. Okay? And so this concept flows directly from the limitation that Calvinists place upon God's love in spite of the fact that it, like every facet of his being, is infinite. Right? God is infinite. And would his love be infinite? Because the Bible says God is love. So can you limit his love? No. God is infinite. You can't limit God. One of their prominent apologists declares. So this is a Calvinist that says, the Bible teaches again and again that God does not love all people with the same love. Now, I don't find that in my Bible, do you? <laughs> okay. Love by God is not applied to the world, but God's love is only applied to the saints. And he's quoting, he believes, from Romans 1.7. So let's go to Romans 1.7. And see how this Calvinist uses Romans 1.7 to say that God doesn't love everybody. Romans chapter 1 and verse 7. Okay. So here, this is the book that uh, the Lord inspired Paul to write to the church at Rome. And so it's called Romans, the letter to the Romans. And verse 7 says, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, can you get limited atonement out of that verse? <laughs> Read it over, think it over for a minute. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. How would you get limited atonement out of that verse? Okay, they do this. Now, Dave Hunt in this book, we haven't got time, but Dave Hunt goes through looking at verse after verse that Calvinists use, and they take verses that are written to the believer and say, see, that love is only for the believer. So when it says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, well, well, no, no, we'll go to Romans 1, 7. See, there it says it's love for the saints. It's love of God called to be saints. That love is only for the Christians. See how they dissect the Bible in a he, he, heretical way? But he, yeah. calls, he called them to be saints, uh -huh. but he's called everybody be a saint because once you believe he sanctifies you yeah that's right yeah. but it says to all that be in Rome beloved of God so see they limit that verse to mean that God only uses that verse that he only loves the saints mm -hmm. he only loves them but that's taking it totally out of context right that's making an application that is totally false and this is what all heretical groups do they take verses and they tell you but this is what it means and he just letting those people in Rome, those believers know, God loves you. 
But does he love your next door neighbor who isn't a Christian? Yes, he does. He loves them too. Okay. But the average person not knowing the Bible doesn't know anything. Would look at that, look at that, and just say, okay, well, hey, he, he's trained. You know, he's a pastor. He must be, he's a scholar, you know, so he must know what he's talking about. Okay, reading on here, coming back to Dave Hunt's book. Calvin himself declared, all are not created on equal terms, but some are preordained to eternal life and others to eternal damnation. And that's quoting from John Calvin. We're all not created on equal terms. Well, we all don't have same positions and we all don't have same responsibilities, but we're all equal before God. God is respecter, Scripture says, of what? No persons, right? And so Calvin's point that he has, God has preordained. But then how, how would Calvin say, yeah. oh, but I'm, I've been elected because he couldn't, he, he couldn't know it. Because you, you wouldn't be able to choose God unless you've been elected. Yeah, he said that. Now, Dave Hunt, when he was dying, Dave Calvin, he said he hoped. Okay. He wasn't saved. That's why I say a lot of Calvinists that are saved, there are many that are, okay? And they're lovely people. And I had some professors when I was in Bible college that were Calvinists, lovely guys. But again, I had my professors who weren't Calvinists. Whereas Biola was a great institute of evangelism in the early years, okay? But like Tim LaHaye said to me, I think I mentioned it in study, didn't I, about Tim LaHaye saying to me, he said, you know, in the 70s when he come over to Australia and I met Tim LaHaye and at a conference and we were talking and his daughter stayed with me and I for a week and, and her daughter spoke only highly of her mom and dad. If you want to know about somebody, right, speak to the children, <laughs> okay? And his daughter, one of his daughters stayed with us for a week in our unit and she spoke only highly of her mom and dad, okay, of Dr. LaHaye. And, and, uh, but as Dr. LaHaye said when he found out I graduated from Biola, he said, that used to be a great Bible college. These aren't the exact words, but that's what he talked about, is how it was such a hallmark of evangelism. But he said, now that Calvinism has taken over at Biola. I said, yes, I knew it. I had professors who weren't, but I had many. And the, the, co the college was going that way into Calvinistic teachings. You know, losing its evangelistic appeal to the world. Okay? Okay, as we continue to read on here, <clears throat> I've got some more statements here. To the Calvinist, uh, as Stanley Grower, again, now Stanley Grower is a Calvinist. He's a member of the Westminster Assembly, so this means he would be English. And he declared, there is no greater heresy. He says, there is no greater heresy than the suggestion that God loveth all people alike. Now he calls that a heresy. See, that's to a Calvinist. That he, that God loveth all alike. Cain as well as Abel. Judas as the rest of the apostles. Did God love Judas? Yes. Yeah, he loved him. He didn't want that. He loved Cain as well as Abel. God did. This, thus, it is a great heresy. Now, now uh, that is the end of the quote by uh, Grower. But now Dave Hunt speaks. Thus, it is great heresy and dishonoring to God to take a face value that that verse familiar to every Sunday school. Oh, excuse me. No, we're still quoting. We're still quoting from Grower. He still says it's a heresy to take this verse that every Sunday school child knows. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So to take that verse at face value is heresy. That's what Grover says. It is heresy. Because that verse means God loves the world. He loves everybody. For Calvinism to stand, for Calvinism to stand, this cannot mean what the world, what the words seem to say. World and whosoever cannot signify all mankind, but only the elect. So whenever they see the word world or whoever, they say it is only speaking of the elect and not everybody. Okay? Uh, R.C. Sproul, R. Sproul writes, uh, the world for whom Christ died cannot mean the entire human family. Okay? 
it must refer to the universality of the elect. John Owen boldly states that the world here cannot signify all that ever were or should be is as manifest as if it were written with the beams of the sun itself. And so these are Calvinists saying, yes, you cannot, cannot take world or whosoever of those words and make them mean just what they say. It has to mean only the elect, huh? The last one there was John Owen, and there was R.C. Sproul, and uh, there was Stanley Grower. These are all Calvinists. This, now we're... Now again here is Dave Hunt speaking. This limitation upon the atonement of Christ, which requires changing the meaning of key words, arises sincerely from such great concern for God's sovereignty. See, that's what they're after. And we already saw that we talked about God's sovereignty a few weeks ago, right? They, their extreme view of God's sovereignty. He controls everything that happens. He doesn't just know what's going to happen. He determines what's going to happen. Okay? That this facet of his eternal being becomes of disproportionate importance and overrides his equally infinite love. And so his love is taken over by this, this position of Calvinism of limited atonement that God's sovereignty has to control everything that happens, okay? Uh, there's more that's written here. I'll come down. No free will. That basically, there's no free, yes. In Calvinism, there's no free will. No. You don't have a free I can, will. I can kind of understand where right. they're coming from, but I haven't lived my life yet. <laughs> okay. I haven't made all the choices that I'm going to make. Right. God knows them ahead of time, but for me... I'm not there yet. That's right. So therefore, right. it's never it's never too late to call upon the name of the Lord. All right. That's right. All right. Look at the as thief. As long on as the... you're here. That's right. Look at the thief on the cross. Right. Yeah. yeah right. Moment. Harry Ironsides. Now I love Harry Ironsides. I love Harry Ironsides. Let me just tell you a little bit about Harry Ironsides. Look him up on YouTube. But Harry Ironsides was born in 1876. Okay. And he's a Canadian in Ontario, Canada. He was a Canadian. He was a member of the, became a member of the Plymouth Brethren. And that's the Open Brethren Assemblies, Gospel Halls, as they also call them. Great, tremendous fellowship of believers, the Gospel Halls and the Brethren Assemblies. And Harry Ironsides only had an eighth grade education. Eighth grade education. But he became one of the leading Bible teachers in America in the, in the 20th century, in the early part of the 20th century, he died in 1951, Harry Ironsides did. He was invited to go on staff of Dallas Theological Seminary. Uh, Harry Ironsides helped in his evangelistic ministry to promote the biblical teaching of dispensationalism. Most churches were a meal at the turn of the 20th century. Dispensationalism, preaching and teaching was very limited. And Harry Ironsides preached it strongly about the Lord's return, the 70th week of Daniel. What is the 70th week of Daniel? And the tribulation period and the Antichrist and the, and the Lord coming to set up a literal 1,000-year kingdom. Harry preached it all. He was a dynamic preacher. And uh, uh, I had uh, one reason I heard about Harry Ironsides so much is because uh, Ebling, who I spoke about on Sunday, my favorite professor when I was in Bible college, who was born in China, the Chinese professor. He wasn't Chinese, he was Caucasian, but his parents were missionaries, and they were friends of Hudson Taylor. And, and he was in China Inland Missions, the old China Inland Missions. And uh, Harry Insides, when he came to America, he'd done his training, and I mean, not Harry, uh, Harry Insides, but when Evelyn came to America to do his seminary training, he went to Dallas Theological Seminary. And though Harry Ironsides had been invited to be a faculty member of Dallas, he never became a full-time faculty member because he loved doing evangelistic work. But he was a guest, regular guest lecturer for years at Dallas Seminary. And Ebling had Ironsides. <laughs> okay. 
as one of his professors when he was there during those years. And he used to talk about our insights and, and learning from him. And he would say to us, I had, I had uh, uh, Dr. Ebling for two classes and, uh, in Bible. And he would say, now these are the notes from Harry Ironsides. <laughs> this is what Harry taught us, Harry Ironsides. I used to hear that. And um, I'll let you know, my year I finished at Bible College in 76 was the year also that Ebling retired. And he was in his 70s. But the year he retired, Biola Bible College, I forget how many professors, there was the Bible College and there was a seminary. And what they did is they put together a test. And the test was made up by professors from Dallas Theological Seminary. Now back then, Dallas was known as a very fundamental dispensational Bible college. It's not that today, okay? But they put together a major test. And this would have been the Hebrew and the Greek would have been involved in it and all this. A major test and all the professors in the seminary and the Bible college took the test. And guess who got the top score? Ebling. Ebling. The old man who's retiring, who they thought was senile, <laughs> had stories coming out of his ears from all his years being born in China, spoke fluent Mandarin, actually. You, know, you never knew. When he really got excited, that would come some Chinese. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Loved his class. Loved his class. Oh, evil. But yeah, they would, people would say, oh, you know, I love the class. I wish I'd taken more classes. From, but he wasn't teaching that many classes, Evelyn, was it? Was it? But um, yeah, he got the highest score of all the professors. And some of those professors had more than one doctorate degree. Okay? But he, he, got me inter- he got me excited about Harry Ironside. And he was a student of Harry Ironside's. Listen to this statement that Dave Hunt has from Harry Ironside's about Calvinism. No matter how far they, and that's any sinner, he's talking about any sinner, no matter how far they, any sinner, have drifted from God, no matter what their sins may be, they do not have to peer in, into the book of the divine decrees, that's the word of God, in order to find out whether or not they are of the chosen or of the elect. If they come in all their sin and guilt, confessing their iniquities and trusting in Christ as their Savior, then they may have the assurance from His word that they are saved. It has been well said that the whosoever wills are the elect. And the whosoever wants are the non-elect. Isn't that good? The whosoever wills are the elect. And the whosoever won't are the non-elect. But to a Calvinist, the whosoever's are the elect, right? <laughs> okay? Yeah. And so here, you know, he was not a Calvinist, uh, Harry Ironside. Yeah. The whosoever, and salvation is simple. You don't have to study the Word of God for years and years. You simply make a decision as a, as a repentant sinner. And that is a sinner turning from your sin. You want in Christ. That's what he's saying. Just come as a repentant sinner, receive Christ as your Savior, and you have eternal life. And the whosoever wills are the elect, and the whosoever wants are the non-elect. Yeah, that's good. Calvinists, however, are, the, are firm in this issue. And they follow in the steps of Calvin, who said of God... This is what Calvin said, okay? He can only love those whom he justifies, the elect. And so that's the only ones that Calvin said that God can love. Totally. Uh, Therefore, the Calvinists, because of the dogma that depravity equals inability. Remember when we were studying that? Total depravity, okay? Isn't that the first point that we studied? Did, Did I say it correctly? Yeah. Because total depravity to the Calvinist means total inability. You have no ability to make a decision. You have to be saved. You have to have a born-again experience through baptism to make a decision for salvation, right? We learned that, the total inability. And so, see, that, that, see we, we kind of believe that in regards that it is the Holy Spirit that does the, not, not so much the, the changing, but the pulling on the heart. He's drawing. He, d- he does, but we can still say yea or nay. We still say yea or nay. That's right. And so again, I'll quote that. Therefore, the Calvinists, because of the dogma that total, 
I mean, that depravity equals inability, must claim that universal language such as the word, I mean, excuse me, such as the world or any man or whosoever or all doesn't mean literally what they say, okay? That salvation is not offered to everyone, okay? Okay, now, they, they change those meanings of those words. Uh, there's got, I've got more here. Here's some more. Well, there are some Calvinists who, like Spurgeon, rejected limited atonement. Hear that? Spurgeon rejected limited atonement. It is irrational to do so while accepting the other four points. That's what a Calvinist would say. Oh, you can't reject that. <laughs> okay. A leading Calvinist author put it like this. It is in this truth of limited atonement that the doctrine of sovereign election, that God chooses only, comes into focus. In other words, the whole Calvinistic system, which is built upon an extreme view of sovereignty and predestination, collapse if limited atonement is not biblical, which indeed it is biblical, as the plain text of Scripture indicates. Well, plain text of Scripture does not indicate, but see, this guy, yeah, he is, his mind is trained in these positions. But the point they're making here is that if limited atonement is not true, the rest of Calvinism falls apart. Okay. Uh, reading on here. Limited atonement is the one point which even those Calvinists who subscribe to all five points find the most difficult to accept. Okay. That's the one that always falls apart. Okay. It's the one that is the hardest for them. Certainly Spurgeon rejected it as heresy. I love that. Okay. Spurgeon rejected this limited atonement as her heresy. Some consider it to be the Achilles heels of Calvinism. This fifth point. I mean this third point. On the other hand, some Calvinists consider it to be their very strongest point, a limited atonement. Okay? Far from being de derived from Scripture, however, limited atonement must be read into and forced upon in order to make this system hang together. The biblical the Bible, excuse me, the Bible contains many statements which declare in the clearest language that Christ died for all mankind and that the gospel is offered equally available to all and that God wants all to be saved. Despite the fact that most Calvinists insist upon limited atonement. In fact, as Hodge points out, they must in order, they must in order to support the other four points of Calvinism, is that there's limited atonement. So the Calvinist recognizes that unconditional election and limited atonement must stand or they fall together. And we've looked at that already, unconditional election. Okay? Uh, I've got more here underlined. Okay? Uh, what I want to do is let's look at some verses. For instance, they say world doesn't mean world, right? Okay, and this comes here also from out of the out of the out of Dave Hunt's book. Go to the gospel. I mean, go to one John, to the book of one John. This is one of the general epistles. This is in the category of the general epistles in the book of New Testament. And go to one John and look at the very first time one John two two. Okay, the very first time in the book of 1 John, the word world is used. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 2. You there? Now, 1 John, 1 John, 1 John, John, not the Gospel of John, but 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. Okay? Okay, everybody there? This is the first time the word is used in the book of John, 1 John. Okay, my little children, verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation, that is the one, the appeaser of, of God's wrath. Okay, so he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole what? World, and you've heard me say more than once. My Greek professor, when I was in Biola, said, "Hey, 
this stops me from being a Calvinist. I can't be a Calvinist. But what have we heard the Calvinists will say? The word world there is referring to who? Yeah. To all the believers, to the Christian believers. We can't look at it meaning the population of the world. Okay, but in hermeneutics, hermeneutics is the, is the study in the art of interpretation of Scripture. Okay, hermeneutics. Now, when we find a word that is used in a specific sense, we have to always interpret that word in its specific sense unless it's used very clearly in a different sense, right? And same thing we do in English language. So if I tell Amber, would you go today and wash the, I mean, would you go this evening and wash the dishes? So when she, we, we, we wake up tomorrow morning and the dishes aren't washed, we say, Amber, didn't we tell you last night this evening? Oh, well, I thought this evening meant tomorrow night. <laughs> no, this evening means when? It meant last night when we said it to you, right? Okay, we always must interpret any phrases in its common uses and literal uses, okay? Let's look at, John uses the word world 23 times. That is 22 times other than this time here in this one book, 1 John, of only five chapters. He uses the word world. So let's see if we can find the word world represents only Christians. Because he's, the Calvinists would say here it's representing who? Christians. So there must be another passage in this, you know, 22 other times, you think there'd at least be one more time where it uses, just refers to Christians? By well, that logic, there's no way to ever know whether you are a Christian until you are in God. Okay, but let's, let's do this. And I like that. This is what, uh, uh, yeah, this wasn't my idea. This was uh, Dave Hunt's idea. You know, naturally, let's, you always compare scripture of scripture to get the full picture. So let's go from 1 John chapter 2, okay, and look, in John, and look at verse 15. Okay, so 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the Love of the Father is not in him. So three times the word were. Now, would you agree with me that the word world there can only be referring to what's in this world? <laughs> okay. It, would it be talking about elect Christians? You can't make that talk about elect Christians. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of light is not of the Father, but is of the what? World. So again, that can't be talking about elect Christians. And the world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Okay, so is the world applying to elect Christians? No, you can't apply it there. Okay, next time we see world used is go with me to chapter 3 and verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. So 1 John chapter 3 verse 1, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Now could the world there be referring to elect Christians? No, it's not referring to elect Christians. It couldn't be, because it says there they don't know who the real Christians are. If, if you tried to make that elect Christians, well, they don't realize who the real Christians are. Okay, It has to be referring to the world. Okay, Go with me now to uh, verse 13 in chapter 3. <clears throat> Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Okay. So can the world there refer to elect Christians? <laughs> no way. Can you make it refer that way? Okay. Look now, let's see here. Uh, verse 17. Verse 17. But whoso, if, but whoso hath this world's goods, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? And so it's not talking about a person. It's talking about possessions there. You can't see that referring to a person. Okay. And so then you go to, I've got my uh, phone here on. Yeah, chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the what? 
world. Okay? It's the whole world. Yeah. And so it's not talking about elect believers. Now look at verse 3. Okay? And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof ye have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world. So is that talking about elect believers? No, it's talking about all through this world. Then we go to verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. That's very clearly. That's not talking about Christians again. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. So he's speaking of false teachers here. Okay? So it, those verses can't be talking about the elect. So then we go now to, let's see, that was verse 5. Yeah, go down to verse 9. In, we've got to read verse 8, though. Verse 8 and 9. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Okay? Love is not God, but God is love. That's one of his characteristics. He is love. In this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into where? The world, that we might believe through him. Again, that's not referring that just to the elect uh, Christians. It's talking to about this whole world. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. That is the one that appeases the wrath of God. So he okay. loved us that are in the world. <laughs> That's Anybody it. that's in the world is in the world. Is in the world. Okay. Now you go to verse 14. Look down at verse 14. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the what? The world. And that's not referring just to the elect, as they would like to say, oh, that is referring just to the elect. No, the world there, every time we see the word world used, it's speaking of this planet, and the, particularly the people on the planet. Okay? Okay, he sent him to die for us. Okay. Uh, now you go to, let's see, verse 14 to verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect that we might have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Okay? Now Christ, he is now at the right hand of the Father in heaven, but he's in position of acceptance with the Father, right? We are in position of acceptance. We are God's children. He is the Son of God, and through Christ we are God's children, and we are in a position of acceptance. Just as Christ is, so are we. While we are in this world right now, down here, we are accepted in the beloved, Paul says in Ephesians. Accepted in the beloved. Yeah, we've been accepted. A beautiful position to have. Okay, uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. For whosoever is born of God overcometh what? The world. Okay, can't be referring again to the elect. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our what? Our faith. Simply the fact that we have put our trust in Jesus Christ, we are overcomers. That's what an overcomer is. It's not a person who's trying hard, trying hard, trying hard. I, I'm going to do my best and, and be the holiest I can be so God will take me. No. But you want, once you put your faith in Christ as your Savior, you're God's child. You're an overcomer. All overcomers are simple people who are simply people who have trusted in Jesus. They've received him as their Savior. Okay? Then we go to verse, let's see, last one. That was verse, oh, verse 5, and then verse 19. So who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. See, there's your just simple moment, sinner's prayer. You acknowledge Christ as your Savior for your sins, and you're an overcomer. Now you go down to verse 19. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Uh, so try to make the word world there 
referred to the elect, right? If that's the elect, the, whole, the elect lie in what? Wickedness. <laughs> okay? And we know that can't be true. No, all 23 times in the book of John, the word world can only refer to that which it literally means. That in this world, this planet that we live on, in this world that is populated by God's created beings, you and I, human beings, that there is evil, that there is wickedness, and God sent his son to redeem us, to be the savior. For he is, look, look back there, 1 John chapter 4, and that verse um, 14, isn't it? Yeah. And he sent, the father sent the son to be the savior of the world. And that's referring to, for every person on this planet, to save us from our sins. And so, uh, there's no double use of the word world in these verses. And yet Calvinists would have us believe that. Okay? Calvinists would have us believe that. As I go back, there's more here I could quote to you. There's some other verses we could look at real quick. And why don't we do that? We looked at several last week. We didn't look all of them. Uh, but look at Romans chapter 5, verse 6. Romans chapter 5. We didn't look at this verse last week. But here's another verse that makes it very clear that, that the, the atonement is not limited. It's not limited it is on, that it is only for the elect. It is for everybody. Okay, Romans chapter 5, look at verse 6. Romans 5 and verse 6. For when we were yet without strength... This is verse 6. In due time, Christ died for who? The now to the Calvinists, Christ died for who? The elect. the elect. Very clearly, he died for the ungodly. Now, is a lost person, all people were ungodly, right? I mean, whoa, but you got a heart of, that's a, that causes a bit of difficulty for the Calvinists. Okay, to try to explain that one way. Look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 22. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 3, verse 22. Galatians 3, 22. Right after uh, 2 Corinthians there, Galatians 3, 22. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. Everybody's under sin. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ. And what's the promise of faith in Jesus Christ? Salvation, right? Eternal salvation. Might be given to them that what? Believe. Okay? So we're all under sin. Everybody in the world is under sin. And the promise is believe, have faith in Jesus Christ, and you will have salvation. Okay? That promise is given to them that believe. Okay, and we're all under sin. So it's open to everybody. Salvation is not limited to only a group of people. Christ didn't die only for those that believe, but he died for the whole world. Okay? And I think there's one more here. I'm thinking these here. Oh, yeah, we already looked at it. 1 John 4, 14. The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Those were some extra ones that, uh, that were given to us here by Dave Hunt. Vince Wall, we looked at the verses last week from Vince Wall on this and so I just want to close our study with, again, reading Harry Ironside's statement. Okay. No matter how far they have drifted from God, no matter what their sins may be, they do not have to peer into the book of the divine decrees in order to find out whether or not they are the chosen or the elect. Okay. Am I, you know, I'll share with you my dad years ago when I was witnessing to him. He got saved at 84, but during my years, from the time I got saved at 18, I witnessed many times to my dad, and the, he had been under this teaching somewhere because he grew up in a family. Mom and my grandmother and grandfather were lovely Christians, but they had grown up in Baptist churches where there was Calvinist preachers because my one time when witnessing to my dad, probably as in my 20s, and my dad said to me, well, son, it's no use. I'm not one of the chosen ones. <laughs> he said that to me. I said, Dad, no, Christ died for everybody. Oh, no, I'm not one of the chosen. He died for the chosen ones. I heard it in church. <laughs> oh, that's why it took till 
He was 84 years of age before he finally listened to me really share the gospel because his mind had been saturated from the time that he was, uh, you, he grew up in the church. Yeah, He got baptized when he was 12 because he, that was the thing to do. He was at the age now where they said it was accountability and so he followed through and did what everybody else was doing. He got baptized, but he knew he wasn't saved. And he knew that, as he, as he thought, he'd been taught in church and heard it preached, yeah, that he wasn't one of the chosen ones. Okay. That, that uh, belief that you must be a chosen one feeds the pride a bit, doesn't it? Feeds the what now? The pride. Oh. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. pride. Oh, I got to say, can't you see where <clears throat> you, in Europe, with the churches being so amillennial, that so many of the churches stood with Hitler because oh, yeah. they, with Calvinistic, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. We got to get rid of the Jews. They're not part of the chosen ones. They've been disregarded now. They're it's finished. They crucified. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it just, mm. yeah. And ministers stood with Hitler in this position, different church leaders, yeah. you know, that, yeah, okay. So sad. And, and that's still going on prevalent, yeah, prevalent today. Yeah, there's, there's so many churches, you know, God, God determined everything's going to happen, and so we'll just go along with what's taking place. And don't worry, those people, yeah, let them go. Yeah, let, let them do what the government wants to do to them. That's fine because, you know, they weren't chosen. And so again, as, as Harry Ironside says, I'll just put, come to the closing statement. Whosoever wills are the elect. Whosoever wills are the elect. And the whosoever wants are the non-elect. That's very good. Very good. Non-elect, well, you wouldn't accept him, so you won't be in heaven. But the elects are all the people who said, yes, Jesus, I want you in my heart and my life. We'll close the study in prayer and go into our prayer time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for some of Dave Hunt's uh, material here that we've read about Calvinism. And Lord, we know that there's many lovely Christians that are in churches under Calvinistic teaching, and many ministers who are Calvinists who love the Lord dearly. But Lord, as we look truly, and for many of them have not really studied it, they only saw surface ideas and didn't get into the depths of what the teaching really is. And, uh, but Lord, for those who do get into the depth of the teaching, we know that they're perpetrating heresy and they're purposely doing it blinded for whatever reason by Satan to give forth these teachings. And even as we shared and we will share later how even Calvin himself was unsure when he died if he knew he was going to heaven. He hoped. And Lord, we thank you that our hope is in Jesus. And we know as Scripture says that's a sure hope. We have no doubt heaven is ours because Jesus lives in our heart, our life. Thank you for your truth. And Lord, thank you now for this time of prayer, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Now as we come to our prayer time now, uh, we're going to continue to pray for Vincent, okay, and for his recovery. And as, as Ming put on the WhatsApp, he has fever, and so I want to pray for him. But he looked so good yesterday when I was there visiting him in the hospital. And, and, and continue to pray for Ming, because remember, she can't go in the hospital because she's not vaxxed. I'm not vaxxed either. The reason I was able is because I've had COVID and now I have immunity and I've got a four year uh, pass, so to speak, I mean, a four month pass <laughs> so I can go around visiting. My pass now finishes at the end of July because I got COVID in March. At the end of July, I'm able to visit in hospitals. Okay, so um, continue to pray for him. We're praying for full recovery. Pray for Leah. Uh, she's got COVID. She tested positive last night. The baby's due in June. So pray that everything will go well for her in her pregnancy and that the, this COVID won't affect her and the baby. Um, Allison's son, Ben, I continue to remember him. Uh, I haven't heard an update from Allison on him. Uh, a little Oakley, our grandniece over in America, yeah, talking to my brother today, is doing well. And if they didn't think that Oakley, she would leave the hospital until July. But the way she's going right now, she may leave in the next week or two. And uh, so just pray that she continues to get better and better. Um, Jennifer, continue to pray for Jennifer. I haven't talked to Harold this week or last week, but continue to pray for Jennifer there to get that operation. I know if an operation got scheduled, 
Harold had called me. And so I uh, continue to pray for Jennifer in this area. Sharam's court case is this month on the 18th of May. So pray for that court case for Sharam. Uh, and um, the uh, going down to our ministries down here, uh, pray for especially the Children's Church. We've started. We won't have it this week because we have the Mother's Breakfast, Mother's Day Breakfast. And just pray that it will be a blessing for everyone. And so mothers come at 930 and we're looking to spoil you. And uh, so uh, Mother's Day breakfast. And guys, I'll be at the hall from 8 o'clock and getting things ready and setting up. So whenever you can come. No, and no Sunday when, school. No Sunday school because during the Mother's Day breakfast, during Sunday school hour, they'll be eating. And we'll have some ac activities for the ladies, some prizes they can win, some, some contests and things like that. What time mm -hmm. should we be there? Well, any time from 8 o'clock on. Any time after 8, come and we'll give you a job. <coughs> Yeah. Bring an apron. We need dishwashers, people who cook the bacon. <laughs> so, yeah. But we'll have to get the bacon cooking. It takes a little while to cook all the bacon for everybody. Yeah. Okay. Making toast and things like that. And, and uh, making. Uh, Ken called me today and I, and I look. Uh, Ken makes really beautiful scrambled eggs. And so, and also, we'll have fried eggs and poached eggs and stuff like that. Okay. And cereals, all the different cereals. We got people making cinnamon, homemade cinnamon rolls are coming. And Sam will be there with his famous Irish potato bread. Yeah, okay. And so, yeah, there'll be a lot of different homemade things that guys make. And Richard, oh, your dad's making some uh, special dishes that he's bringing. Yeah. Did what, big part? He sent me a text message. Yeah. And so, Richard is bringing some special dishes. Huh? Yeah, hot dishes. It'll be hot dishes. No, no, no. Not. I mean, not hot dishes. No, he's not making hot dishes. Well, it's spicy. I thought you. You know, they'll be warm dishes, not cold, not cold dishes, but warm dishes. Yeah, warm food. It'll be warm food, warmed up food, cooked food. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Mother's Day breakfast and ladies, everybody gets a rose. Always get roses. Yeah. Uh, and our missionaries, uh, on the back, on the back. Just share this with you. This is from our missionary in Israel, and over there. Uh, <clears throat> Andrew shares, we had to move house in March as the person from whom we were subletting returned to Israel. Uh, you know, he came back to Israel, who they were renting from. So houses as opposed to apartments are not easily attained here when you have eight children. They have eight children, uh, Andrew and Rachel, and they require and the landlord to keep all the utilities and bills under his name for security reasons. So when the time came to vacate, we had no place to go, so we camped in, we camped in various locations. This gave good opportunity to witness to many people around the country and also relate to our forefathers who dwelt in tents. Okay? Okay. The Lord opened the door for a house in a great location where we had been desiring to move for the ministry's sake. The accommodation was originally available to us for only two months. However, the landlord recently told me we can stay here as long as we like. So praise the Lord. They've got a house to rent in an area they don't want to tell publicly because they have people who oppose their gospel ministry. But wherever they are at in Israel... Now the landlord is with them and giving them, to, allowing them, that is, to stay there as long as they want. Okay. And he goes on to talk about his newsletter about orders for gospel tracts. We've had an order for over 200,000 tracts of various files, and, and they're printing heaps of them. They're giving out. And so he's having a great ministry. He's doing a lot of witnessing. Um, listen to this witnessing experience. This is Andrew in Israel. Andrew Lewis, I started witnessing to a group of people in an elevator lift. One of the ladies recognized me and said, you told me about this before. And it was about 13 years ago when I asked her how long ago it was. <laughs> and then he said, has anyone else ever told you this? And she said, you're the only one. So please pray the Lord will send forth more witnesses and laborers into his harvest field as time is short and the fields of harvest are great, and which is so true. Okay. 
and Daniel over in India uh, shares with me how he's, he's lost some support. And uh, various things have been happening. Uh, there were threats and disturbances in some of our churches. Uh, this is going on everywhere, okay? Uh, but we've seen God be great in His progress and His blessings. And uh, he goes on uh, talking about how a Dr. Jack Cox of the New Testament Baptist Mission was supporting for several years our Bible college and some of our pastors in, in A-N-D-H-R-A. How do you? A-N-D-H-R-A. Andra. Andra, yeah. So this, this one mission uh, uh, fellow, Jack, uh, Dr. Jack, had been supporting them, but, but the past five years he could not. So they lost that support. And um, so uh, they're, they're hurting there. And so what money, he says, I truly appreciate all of you who've helped us in, t in times of trouble and for your prayerful help for us. And truly I'm thankful to God for his wonderful provisions from Australia and Singapore <laughs> to almost completing the construction in two places where they're building buildings over there. And God willing, the dedication of another church in another town, and I can't pronounce the name of that town, and so he talks about, again, the ministry in the various areas uh, there of India where they're ministering the Word of God. But yeah, they've lost some of their support from this one mission or organization that was helping them. Okay, and that's Pastor Daniel in India. So continue to pray for that. And there are various missionaries are on the slip there. Pray for the elections, uh, for our country as a whole, for righteousness to be exalted through this election. Mandates in Australia to be stopped. Various countries are stopping the mandate. Did you hear Denmark now is stopping the vaccines? They're suspending vaccines in Denmark on May the 15th. And so there'll be no more, or I shouldn't say no more, but at this point they're suspending them. And so pray for freedom of choice. This is a democracy. There should be freedom of choice. And remember I read out in church a few weeks ago, how do you make a nation a communist nation? How did Val Zelensky say to do it? Make a mandatory emergency. That came out over 50 years ago. They said how to do it, change a nation into a communist nation. Number one uh, way to do it is to declare a mandatory medical emergency. Okay? Control, control, controls. Yeah, as Christians, let's be aware of what's taking place around us. Oh, evil is just permeating everything. Everything. It's just. I just asked too, yeah. the situation with Johnson's. Yeah. I mean, you're going to be here the day from Australia or are they still not? No, they're in, they're in East Timor. The Johnsons are in East Timor, but now, without now that they've gotten there, uh, they have to apply for another visa. Yeah. So they've sent a newsletter asking to pray for another, they have to apply for another visa. So who knows why the government, they didn't say exactly why the government said they had to apply for this other visa, but now they gotta apply for another visa to stay there. And, it said, and they said it may affect uh, the Smiths that they're working with, with Chris and Margie Smith, who've been there for many years. I remember years ago when Chris and Margie, they're a lovely couple. They're from Northern New South Wales, uh, we, we used to have fellowship together, Chris and Margie. He's older than me, Chris is. And um, so let's go to Lord in prayer. I'll begin praying and starting around this side and we'll pray around. And uh, Mike, you'll be the last one to close. Okay. Father, we thank you for all your grace and your mercy to us. We thank you for the privilege it is again to have this opportunity here tonight and with those of us that are seated here and those that are listening to come into your presence. We come by the Spirit of God who lives within us, who, Father, we thank you, will never leave us, never forsake us. We are accepted now in the Beloved. Just as your Son, Father, is accepted, our Savior Jesus, as we read tonight there in John, we are accepted. We are with, one with him. We are there. And Lord, we thank you for how you want to work your will in all of our hearts and lives. And as we yield as your obedient children, you're able to work your will. And we just uh, lift Vincent to you. And Lord, we thank you for him and the years that he and Ming have been a part of this fellowship and so faithful and so encouraging to others. 
And Lord, we pray for him to recover from this operation. We pray that this cancer that was in his pancreas would go no further. We pray the doctors got it all, but most importantly, that your healing hand would be upon him, that you would restore his health and stay this cancer and let it not go any further within his body. And Lord, we just thank you for him and strengthen me through this time. And then, Lord, we just want to uh, lift up to you this election here in our nation. Uh, I personally believe this is a very pivotal election. And, Lord, it looks like the way the parties are and what we've been seeing and what's happening, that independence, Lord, could be a key to seeing Australia turn around. Instead of continuing on this slope of downwardness into authoritativism, of control of the population, of freedom being taken away from us, Father, but choice being, Father, uh, removed. We, Lord, we pray that independence that uh, are Christians and independence that uh, are making right choices and listening to their conscience, which you have given a godly conscience to every person, Lord, that they would uh, truly be many of them elected to our parliament. And something never happened before is a, a government that would be set up, that would be ruled and directed and led by individuals who, Father, are standing for moral principles that we have don't see in our society today. In our education, the perversion that our children are being taught and the books that are being read and the teachings are just so awful. And Lord, the the mandates that have just made so many lose their jobs and so many homes and people have lost their homes and lost their livelihoods because of fact uh, of these mandates. And Lord, the Lord, and Lord, the ones that have lost their lives because of it. So Lord, we just pray for a big change toward godliness and righteousness in our country. You know, elect, I pray, may we see elected many Christians into our federal parliament. And then, Lord, I just uh, want to pray here for uh, Father Leah. And, Lord, pray that her COVID will not affect in any way the baby. Only a few more weeks until the baby will be born. And so we just pray for a special grace, Father, through this time with her having COVID. And we ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Lord, dear Heavenly Father, we come into your presence, seeking your will. You lead us, direct us, instruct us, that we might pray according to your perfect will and not according to the flesh. I thank you, my Father, that uh, we can come, and it's still possible to come together like we are now, and uh, Pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and no one is stopping us. We thank you for this. Continue to protect us from the wiles of Satan and his servants, and uh, help us to bring glory to your name. And I pray also, Father, for our ministry and online ministry to be a blessing that many will have their eyes opened and understand that it's appointed for man once to die, but after this a judgment. Mm -hmm. Even our political leaders might they understand that they might be in a high position there, but the time will come when they have to give account of what they've done while they're in this position. And Father, also I do pray for an assistant pastor so that uh, Rick will have more time to do other things. And so I do pray that you bring them along. A man of God who was touched and uh, got born again. And uh, so I pray for that. And also for Sunday school teacher that uh, you might bring more along who are able and competent and willing to teach the children the Avana ministry and uh, other Bible studies. And I do pray that uh, the coming Lord's Day, when it will be Mother's Day, 
that uh, this breakfast will be a blessing for everyone present there, and, but above all, that the Lord Jesus will be glorified. And so, my Father, also I do pray for our governments that all those which uh, are evil people will be removed from it, mm. but that uh, those which belong mm. to the Lord Jesus, which have been born again, will take their positions mm. for this pray. And so, our Father, I thank thee that when when you started, there were two or three gathered together. together you are in the midst of it. Amen. We welcome thee, Father, and Lord Jesus, and uh, we want to do your will. Amen. Help us to do so. In the Lord Jesus Christ, precious name of pray. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you now in the name of Jesus, and we give you thanks, Lord, that you're able to do immeasurably, immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we will never fully understand how long, how wide, how deep your love is for us. You are unlimited, Lord. And I thank you that you're a gracious God. You are a merciful God. As the psalmist wrote, Lord God, if you were to mark us iniquities, Lord, who could stand? Mm -hmm. And also, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that there is forgiveness with you, that we may learn your statutes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Lord, for your long suffering. Thank you so much for going to the cross for each one of us, Lord, Amen. for all who will believe. Your blood was shed for everyone Lord and I thank you that by your stripes we are healed thank you Lord by your blood our sins have been washed away we are cleansed though our sins are as scarlet Lord we are white as snow thank you for covering us with your precious blood you died such a painful death Lord and all you call for us, Lord, is to be a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy and acceptable unto you, Lord, and to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Thank you for your blessed word, Lord. Please help each and every one of us to, to get stuck into your word, to assimilate it into our lives, Lord. I thank you for this Bible study. I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. Thank you for the freedom that we have in this country that we can meet in peace and safety, Lord. I would like to pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ around the world that are persecuted, Lord. I think of the Christians in Iran. As Sadaf shared a few weeks ago, that some of them have gone to prison, Lord, for having underground churches. And I pray that you just be with them, protect them and bless them, Lord. I think of the believers in China, in Myanmar, in, in um, India, Lord, and the Ukraine, everywhere in the world, Lord. I pray that you just help them to um, give them the strength that they need to endure and the comfort that they need in times like this. Um, I thank you, Lord. As Pastor Rick shared tonight, what Harry Ironside said, but also Connie Ten Boom, Lord, she said there is no pit so deep that, that you cannot reach down into, Lord. So we thank you for that. Lord, there are many prayer requests here. I, I lift up Father God, I lift up uh, Sharam to you and the Bragas. I lift up my brother Mike here and um, I lift up Iman to you right now as well, Lord. All those that are awaiting visas, I pray that your mighty hand just be upon those situations, Lord. That um, when you open a door, no man can shut it. And when you shut a door, no man can open it, Lord. So I thank you that you are sovereign. Father God, I would just like to offer you praise and thanks right now for 
what's going on in the Lewis's mm. life, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that they they got to rough it for a while. And um, as Andrew has said, Lord, he gives you. They just gave you thanks, Lord, that for a taste of what what the the Jewish people went through in the wilderness when they dwelt in tents, Lord. And I thank you for offering them a um, for providing them a place to stay now, Lord. And the the landlord has said that they, they can stay as long as as they like. So I thank you, Lord, that you are our provider. Mm -hmm. I thank you so much, Lord, that um, as that song we sing, sing says, Lord, that my God knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. So I thank you these things, Lord. I'd like to pray, Father God, for the election coming up. And as Martin Isles has said, I've watched a few videos of his, Lord. I thank you for the work that he's doing. And that he's sitting down with some of these senators and asking them point blank what their beliefs are and where they stand. And as he said, Lord God, that there is no, there's no truly righteous government, Lord, but all we can do is vote accordingly. And I pray, as my brother Nick prayed it a couple of weeks ago, that you just help us to see, Lord, I pray that just these politicians just be exposed, um, warts and all, so that we may see, we may see what they stand for. Nothing in the shadows, Lord. I have never voted below the line before in my, my voting life, but I intend to this time, and I pray, Father God, for wisdom for each one of us to, um, to just vote. I think of that um, Senator Eric Abetz in Tasmania, Lord, and I, the interview that he um, shared with Martin Niles, and he seems like a really decent bloke, mm. a believer, and I thank you, and I pray that more people like that would get into politics, Father God. I thank you, Lord, so much for every blessing upon our lives. And i just like to pray, Father God, for Vincent right now, for a full recovery and comfort for Ming, Father God, and the Lee family at this time. I pray that your hand just be upon them all, Lord. Father God, I pray for Harold and I pray for Jennifer and I pray for healing, continued healing in their lives, Lord, with Harold with his circulation problems and his heart issues and Jennifer also, that they have been through so much the past few years, Lord. And I pray now, I give you thanks that they got the cancer. I thank you that she's had this operation, yet she needs another operation, Lord. And I pray that if it be your will, that you would bump her up the list for how five or six hours or however long the operation takes, Lord. I pray that you would open up a, a hole in the schedules of, of the surgeon. And I pray for Don and I pray for Carolyn. I pray for all that have had ill effects to these, um, these vaccinations, Lord. I pray for the Watkins family, Lord. I pray for um, Megan and Sean. And I thank you that little Oakley is, is uh, doing well as she's not out of hospital yet, Lord. But it seems that's around the corner. So I just pray for the Watkins family now, Lord. Mm. Um, I thank you, Lord, that um, Peyton is with you, Lord. Yes. Peyton is with you. Mm. It's sad, but at the same time, Lord, we know where she is. Mm. And I thank you. I thank you all these things, my Lord. Thank you for, for your love. Thank you so much for your wondrous love in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able to bring our prayers and petitions before your throne of grace. We thank you, Father, for your many blessings and your love and provision to us. And Lord, we thank you for news of the missionaries. We do uphold the Lewis's in Israel and pray, Lord, for your... Thank you and praise you for your loving hand upon them. 
And Lord, we just do commit to you that work and grant them the grace to be your servants in that place. We pray, Father, for the salvation of souls around them through the ministries of your people. We pray, Lord, that hearts would be touched and that souls would be drawn unto thee through your precious word and through the work of your Holy Spirit. And we do think of our missionaries, the likes of those in India, Myanmar and Israel and all those countries, Lord, that are under much stress and turmoil. Lord, we just do pray that their eyes would be upon thee, that they would know your strength and undertaking. Lord, that you would bless, strengthen and guide them. We thank you, Father, for the church ministry of the children at school at church. And we pray for Nick and Amber as they bring mm, yes. messages and stories to the children. We ask, Lord, that you would touch their young hearts and impress upon them the precious words of your truth. We pray, heart, Lord, for little hearts that are open mm, and receptive yes. to your leading and that you would minister mightily there. We also pray, Father, for the Mother's Day breakfast. We pray, Lord, for your message on that day that you would lay upon Pastor Rick's heart those things that you would have conveyed to us. And, Lord, that we would be blessed and encouraged in the things of yourself. And we pray your blessings upon Pastor Rick as he brings that message. We pray too, Lord God, for um, the coming elections mm. Lord there is much deceit and yes, so much turmoil in all of this that we just do look to you and pray for your wisdom for your guidance and Lord help us to make righteous and just decisions that would um, bring about more righteousness and truth in this nation so Father we do commit that to you we thank you Lord that your hand is upon all these things and we pray, Father, for that we would be guided of your righteousness to choose those that you would have yes. chosen. Lord, we just do commit it to you and we thank you for the many prayers that have gone up and we give you our thanks and praise in Jesus' yes. name. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, Almighty God, Thank you for everything. Thank you for this Bible study tonight. Thank you. We know that you love all your children and there is no discrimination in your grace. You love them. Uh, tonight, uh, I want to pray for Brother Shahram, who uh, has a lot of uh, problems with his uh, visa case, and I hope this time uh, we see the judges to uh, make a good decisive decision and he get his visa. Uh, I pray for Mother's Day breakfast to be a blessing for everyone this week. Yes. And uh, uh, I pray for Brother Iman. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to your <coughs> grace, he is working nowadays and it's very good. Uh, and I pray for my uh, family as well. Uh, especially for my parents, my brothers and nephews uh, to be healthy in this uh, COVID situation. And uh, I hope uh, all the brothers and sisters in Christ we have in different countries, finally, they manage to have the opportunity and chance to praise your name because 
in some countries it's really difficult and not safe. And uh, I also pray for our church uh, and I pray for uh, new people to come to Christ. And uh, because we know that the only way is you. And uh, we should keep in mind that we all finally go to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, I've got some text messages that have come through. And in these text messages, uh, let me just get here. Colin and Dolores have sent one and to pray for Dolores' dad. He has COVID. Now, he's over in Canada, and he has COVID. And so I want to pray for him. And, and so he's in aged care. And Nicholas is yeah, yeah, Nicholas, yeah. And thank you for that, Troy. And so let's just have a moment of prayer for him. And Nick, would you pray for him? We'll give that back to Nick. Pray for Dolores' dad. Um, yeah. uh, we'll have more in a minute. Yeah, okay, sure. Yep. Holy Father, we thank you that uh, we can just continue to come before you in prayer. And now we um, have this request that's come through from um, Dolores about her dad, um, who's got COVID now and um, understanding he's in aged care, which means he's getting up there in his age. So... Father, we know that this disease can be quite harmful to those that um, are older in age. But, Father, we know, Lord, that if he's in your care, Lord, there's nothing to worry about. So we do commit him to your care. We pray, Lord, that you will just touch him and heal him and just raise him up to be well again. I just pray that you be with him, meet his needs at this time. And uh, I pray the family can, around him can continue to um, just help, and help him in any way that they can. So, Lord, may we see him, Lord, raised to full health. Um, and we trust you in this, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, hang on, hang on. Sure. I know what for you. Ben. Mm -hmm. Ben, yep. yep. She has sent this text message. Thank mm -hmm. you, Allison. Ben goes back into hospital on Monday for three days if fasting and testing, if blood and glucose levels. Uh, he is still struggling to breathe, and Ben thanks you all for his continued prayers. So for Ben and his issues with breathing. Yeah, and he doesn't know Christ, does he? I don't think he does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Allison's son, Ben. Yeah. 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 Allison's son, Ben. Don't know for sure. So They're both know. well in the Bible. Right, okay. So yeah. if you just pray for his yeah. health situation there. Okay? Yeah, sure. No worries. Lord, we also want to pray for Allison's son, Ben, um, who's been in the hospital, Lord, now uh, for a while. Lord, and his um, health has been taking a turn for, a worse, for the worse, Lord. And uh, Father, we... No, Lord, that he's needing to do some tests now uh, by fasting, Lord, so that they can observe his blood glucose glucose levels and all that. I do pray, Lord, that, um, Father, that those tests will reveal um, to the doctors whatever it is his needs are so that it can be clear, Lord, what a clear path forward would be for him uh, to recovery. So, Father, we commit Ben to your hands as well. Um, we thank you, Lord, and we know that Alison would be faithfully praying for him. And uh, we join her in our prayers as well, and we commit him to your, to your hands as well. And uh, Father, I just pray that you will just watch over him, Lord, and give him the strength he needs at this time. And I just pray that you will just heal him, Lord, of whatever it is that he's going through. So we commit him into your hands also, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Then there's one last one that's coming here. This is from Queensland. Mm -hmm. And Michael, whose wife you know, was taken yeah. home with cancer, and this has come from him. It says, Hi, Pastor. Please pray for my sister Jenna. And I remember Jenna when she was a little girl there in our ministry years ago in New South Wales. She is currently in Prince Charles Hospital. That's over there in Queensland, in Brisbane. In the Prince, Char uh, Prince Charles Hospital with heart pain and abdominal pains and severe migraines. She has been very sick for nearly a week now and is now getting tests done. Not sure if they will admit her or send her home. I dropped her off early this evening, and her husband is working out at Longreach. And so, uh, so, and so Jenna's come home, and he's got these different issues. I mean, he's come back to Brisbane. And so would you pray for Jenna? Yeah. And that uh, whatever these pains are, that uh, the Lord would just take them away? Yeah. And that she get over it? Yeah, sure. 
Lord, we've also just got a request now from um, Brother Michael Purden, um, whose sister Jenna has been admitted to hospital uh, with various pains, Lord, uh, migraines, abdominal pains, chest pains. Um, Lord, um, it seems pretty severe, Lord. Um, so I do pray, Lord, that likewise you'd be with her, Lord, and I just pray that you'll take the, the, these pains away. And Father, that um, if she needs to go through any tests or whatever this, um, whatever treatment she needs, Lord, um, it sounds like it's something that needs to be brought to the surface as quickly as possible. So I just pray that um, if it's something serious that needs to be attended to straight away, that Father, that um, a diagnosis will be made soon so it can be revealed, Lord, what the what needs to be done here and father we commit her jenna into your hands as well in jesus name amen, amen. Thank you. well thank you thank you for listening tonight and <coughs> tuning in and god bless you and lord willing we'll see you on sunday uh, for our mother's day breakfast and blessings i pray for everyone uh, ladies, uh, there's going to be some play. There's going to be a play and some singing, special singing. So it should be a beautiful morning. And bring your friends, and maybe somebody might come to know Christ on Sunday morning. Amen. So God bless you. Thank you for tuning in again. And we'll just hang up here. <laughs>